Right, now I'm looking at the camera, and the camera's in focus. If I could fix my pupil so they didn't open and close, I could fix it so that I have my pupils wide open because not a lot of light's coming in and the background is totally out of focus. If I want to see the camera and the background, take my ND filter off. Ta-da! There you go. Now, although that was a tongue-in-cheek opening, it was actually to do with cameras and how they work because we have an automatic camera inserted into our head, our eyes, with a pupil and the pupil is the, it forms the aperture, the iris, or the f-stop. This thing works by opening and closing according to how much light there is, and therefore, it actually does control the depth of field. Now, recently, I have been talking about keeping the shutter speed as close to a 50th as possible. Okay, so we fixed the shutter at a 50th of a second, and today, it's beautifully sunny. So, if I leave the shutter at a 50th, my picture is probably going to be way too bright. What you've got to do then is put some sunglasses on, but they've got to be the right level. With those sunglasses on the front of your camera, or translate sunglasses to ND filter, what you can do is open the aperture, which means your depth of field, remember in the earlier film I was talking about depth of field becomes shallower, which means you can be in focus with your background out of focus, and that's by putting those sunglasses or an ND filter on. Now the thing is, is how do you choose the right ND filter? Now this part is applicable specifically to Sony CX and AX cameras because what they do is they control that the ISO, that's how sensitive your camera is, behind the scenes, and they all compensate for the amount of light. Okay, that's fine. On a bright sunny day, your camera's naturally gonna set itself to 100, ISO 100, which is brilliant. But what you want to avoid is going to ISO 400 on a sunny day. And if you put sunglasses onto it or an ND filter, if it's too big a value, what's going to happen is the, uh, the aperture is going to open fully and that's not going to be enough. And then the ISO is going to change to something like 400 and that will degrade the picture. So you've got to really be careful how you judge the strength of your ND filter. So I'm going to help you decide what ND filter to put on. Let's pretend that you want to use an ISO of 100 on a sunny day with an ND filter fitted. So first of all, 100 ISO, that means set your shutter speed to 100th. That's the same as the ISO. If you set it to 100th, that means you would normally use on a sunny day in the sun, you would use F16, okay? That means everything would be exposed okay. F16 is for sunny days, unless you're in somewhere like Florida where probably a bit more than 16, I think might be applicable. But in the UK, F16 for sun is, is great. Let's say the target one, the target aperture that we want to get, we want to get it from F16 down to F4. So we have a narrow depth of field. Now, how to calculate. So let's count down the F stops from 16 to F4. We got 16 to 11, 11 to 8, 8 to 5.6, 5.6 to 4. That's four f-stops. So you want the equivalent of an ND four-stop cut. So a four-stop cut would be 2, 4, 8, 16. In sunny weather, you want an ND filter of 16, ND 16, on a sunny day to get your aperture down to f4 in bright sunlight. Sunny days requires F16. Slightly bright days, slightly sort of dulling down days, F8. If you're in the shade, you're gonna want F5.6 and anything that's less than shade, go down to whatever you need to get down to to get a picture. 
Now, obviously, if you want to stick to the 50th of a second, that means you can't use F16. You change your camera to a 50th of a second. That means instead of 16, you have to go up to F22, which is five stops. So instead of using ND16, you're gonna to have to go to ND32 to get the same effect at a 50th of a second. So it's a calculation. If you get the calculation right, the ISO on your camera won't suddenly shoot itself up to 400 ASA on a sunny day. ND filters are graded as ND2, one stop, ND4, two stops, ND8, three stops, ND16, four stops, ND32, five stops. Generally in the UK, you would use a 16 or a 32. I would actually go to a 16 because the UK isn't particularly bright most of the time. So now let's have a look at some practical applications of using an ND filter. I'm using the Sony camcorder and for this shot I haven't bothered to use an ND filter but what I have done is I've altered the aperture or the iris or the f-stop so that it's very low in order to get the background out of focus. Once the background is out of focus that's fine because I don't really need to worry about the shutter speed in this case because this is basically a still shot there's not a lot of movement so in this case I really wouldn't use an ND filter. But for this shot, in order to try and get some of that background a little bit fuzzy, I've changed it so I've put an ND filter on so I can use an f-stop of 2, which will hopefully help to get it down. And I have to do the calculation. Assuming 100 ISO at a hundredth of a second, this is about f8 weather, I want to get it to 2. So f8, f5, 6, f4, f18, that's three stops. But because I'm using a 50th of a second at a stop, four stops. I want a four stop ND filter, which is two, four, eight, 16. So I've got a 16 ND on here at the moment. And now I can use the camera at F2 while it's sunny without having a very fast shutter speed. So I hope you can understand the calculation, but once you get it right, then hopefully your Sony camera won't up the ISO into something that's going to destroy the picture quality. I hope this video was useful to you, and more importantly, you understood what it was going on about. It was basically aimed at Sony camcorder users, where you really don't have control over the ISO. And the thing about the ISO is if it goes too high, you're gonna get a poor quality picture. But also if you want that shallow depth of field, you want to be able to open the aperture or the iris or the f-stop. To do that, you do need an ND filter and you have to work out the calculation yourself manually or else the camera will take over and adjust the ISO. And that's why I was going on about the calculations and how to do it. If you've got any questions, just get back to me and I'll always try and help you. But it is an important aspect of using a Sony camcorder if you have a filter thread on the front and you want to use ND filters. So I hope to see you next time. Cheers for now.